how to improve your computer speed and performance right now for free just by tweaking your operating system settings. Every time I make a new computer, I always perform all of these steps I'm about to show you. But before we begin, I have a caveat. I can't guarantee that by changing these settings, you'll notice a night and day difference in your system speed, as every computer is different and I don't know what kind of hardware you have and what software you have installed. But generally speaking, this should optimize your system's performance, if only marginally. It costs you nothing, there's nothing you need to install, and hey, it can't hurt to try. So let's get started. It doesn't matter what order you do any of this in, but let's begin with the power settings. Pretty much everything I'm about to show you also applies to both Windows 8 and 10, but I'm using Windows 7. So if you're not using Windows 7, there will probably be slightly different methods of getting to the settings to tweak, if that's the case. But the way I get to the power settings is by right-clicking anywhere on the desktop and then selecting Personalize in the drop-down box. Hit Screen Saver and then click on Change Power Settings. Alternatively, you can go into the Start search box and type in Power Options. If you're not using Windows 7, you can head into the Control Panel, go to Hardware and Sound, and then Power Options. Either way, I like selecting High Performance. Hit Change Plan Settings next to it. Now click Change Advanced Power Settings. Scroll on down to Wireless Adapter Settings. Open up Power Saving Mode, and make sure it's set to Maximum Performance. Of course, this tip only applies if you actually have a Wi-Fi card in your computer. Next, USB Settings. Disable the USB Selective Suspension. Although this setting is designed to save some power, it's a common culprit for causing USB devices such as keyboards and mice to have problems with performance. And when enabled, best case scenario, it only saves a minuscule amount of power. Now on PCI Express, turn off the link state power management. This setting is designed to stop your PCIe slots from drawing too much power when they're idle. But I've read reports of users' graphics cards performance getting throttled when it's not off. Moving on to processor power management, set the minimum processor state to 100%. Just like everything else I'm showing you in this video, this is entirely up to you. You can set this to any number you want, but basically, the higher this number, the quicker your CPU will rev up. Of course, this will also use a bit more power and will create a bit more heat. But if you're watching this, I'm assuming you're not too concerned with saving energy. Make sure the system cooling policy is active. When it's otherwise set to passive, the computer will throttle or slow down the processor in priority over speeding up the heatsink fan, again, in an attempt to save power. As a warning, particularly if you're using a laptop, setting this to active may make your computer a bit noisier. And then of course, make sure the maximum processor state is set to 100% as well. Finally, in the multimedia settings, set when playing video to optimize video quality. That's all the tips I have for you in the power settings. Keep in mind that if you're using a laptop or other mobile device, doing any of these things will cause your battery to drain a little faster. But what's nice is that you'll get two separate options for whether your device is plugged in or not. Now get to your system configuration. With Windows 7, when I type in MS Config in the start search bar and hit enter, I get to it. But if that's not working for you, open up the run application and type it in there. How to get to the run application? Easy. Type in run in your search bar. Once you've made it, go to the services tab. These are all the services that will be running in the background of your system. Check the hide all Microsoft services box. I wouldn't disable any of those if I were you. Now, basically, the more of these services you have enabled, the slower your computer could potentially operate. Disable any services that you don't need or want or mysterious ones that may have been installed on your system behind your back. For example, I have the app Apple mobile device system disabled because I don't have any Apple mobile devices. I suspect Apple stuck this little parasite of performance in my system after I installed iTunes. Once you've removed everything you don't want running on your computer, move on to the startup tab. Again, disable anything you don't want running as soon as you turn your computer on. The more of these you have enabled, technically speaking, the slower your computer will boot up. Do all of this at your own risk. Be very careful as to what you are selecting. You don't want to accidentally disable something important. All right, now that we've increased our computer's power usage and removed any unneeded background services and startup programs, let's move on to speeding up and optimizing our internet connection. Head on into the device manager. On my Windows 7 computer, I get there by typing device manager in the start search box. But again, if that doesn't work for you, you'll be able to find it in the control panel. If you're using Windows 10, hit the start button, then settings, devices, printers and scanners or connected devices, and then device manager. Open up network adapters. If you're wired to the internet with an ethernet cable, select the item that has ethernet somewhere in the text. The device will be unique to whatever kind of system you have, so I can't give you an exact name, but it should have the word ethernet in it. Right click it, hit properties, and go to the advanced tab. Now again, each ethernet device may be a bit unique, so you may or may not see all of these options, but here's what I can show you. This is everything recommended to disable. Adaptive interframe spacing, enable PME, energy efficient ethernet, flow control, interrupt moderation, jumbo packet, anything that has the word offload in its name, both priority and VLAN, receive side scaling, and reduce speed on power down. 
disable all of these. I don't want to take too much of your time explaining why, but basically these properties are either designed to save energy and power, or they just counterintuitively slow down or interrupt your internet connection. There are some cases where you may want some of these enabled, but generally speaking, your internet's performance will at least mildly improve by just flat out shutting all of these off. Now, set receive buffers and transmit buffers to whatever the max value is. My systems is 2048 for both of them. The higher these numbers, the more resources your computer will use, but in return, you'll get more out of your internet. Now move on to the driver tab. Hit update driver and then search automatically for updated driver software. The program will search the internet if there's a newer driver available for your ethernet connection and will download and install it if it finds one. Then finally, select the power management tab. Uncheck the allow the computer to turn off this device to save power box for obvious reasons. Now click OK. Now if your computer connects to the internet via Wi-Fi, in the Network Adapters tab of the Device Manager, look for the device that contains the word wireless. Again, right-click it and hit Properties. This is going to be almost the exact same procedure for when tweaking the Ethernet driver, but the properties will be a bit unique. As you know by now, every system is different and pretty much every Wi-Fi card is different, so yours may have unique properties than the one I'm showing you here. Most of these you can just leave alone, but check for anything involving saving power or energy efficiency. Turn these off if you want to boost your Wi-Fi's overall performance. Other than that, there are two key properties you'll probably want to tweak. The first one is transmit power. What do you think you should do with this? You got it, set it to the highest setting you can. Look at you, you're catching on to this. The other property is the roaming aggressiveness. Now, first off, what exactly does roaming refer to with devices that utilize wireless internet connection? Well, to put it short, roaming aggressiveness is how frequently the device is searching for a better spot to fetch its internet. The higher this setting, the more power and resources your Wi-Fi card will use in order to search for more optimal internet. Now you might be wondering, isn't it a good thing that the device is roaming for better internet? Theoretically, yes, mainly if you're on a mobile device like a phone or tablet, something that you'll be moving around a lot. But if the device won't be changing its physical location very often, if at all, there really is no need to enable any kind of roaming. Like so many of these properties, they suck up resources that the device could be using to just have a good, solid, fast, uninterrupted internet connection. And then, just like the ethernet, check the internet for updated drivers and do not allow the computer to shut the device off in order to save power. That's it. Those are all the tips I have for you today, and I reiterate, you don't need to make any of these adjustments that I'm advising you to. I can't guarantee that you'll notice a night and day difference in your computer's performance by doing any of these, but these are just a handful of things you can adjust for your system speed and efficiency to be as good as it possibly can, whatever its full capabilities may be. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more PC how-to videos, and if you have any questions at all, drop a comment down there and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Torx out.